Hello folks. Our subject of discussion today is 1 John chapter 4 verses 1 through 6. I want to offer just a few comments. John is obviously continuing to battle the false teachers who are threatening the health of the churches. And he's also trying to reassure the faithful few who remain to be steadfast, to hold on to the truth, to not give in to the teaching of the false prophets. Now in this section, he's talking about the nature of Jesus Christ. But he's also talking about God's Holy Spirit. And what he wants to say, what he does say in this passage, is that those who teach that Jesus Christ came in the flesh are speaking from the Spirit of God. They are inspired by the Spirit of God. Those who are teaching something else, that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh, well, they're being motivated by other spirits who are false spirits and false prophets. You notice in verse 1 of this section that prophets and spirits are used as equivalent terms. The false spirits motivate the false prophets who are the false teachers who are saying that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh. Now, this is interesting to me because the book of Acts tells us that the Jews had a problem with believing that Jesus was the Christ. That is, that the human being, Jesus, was God's Messiah, God's divine Christ. But here the problem is just the opposite. The false teachers that John has in mind don't believe that the Christ is Jesus. That is, that the divine Christ, the divine spirit, is truly a human being. So what John is trying to encourage us to see and his readers to see is that there was true union of the divine and the human in Jesus Christ. He's talking about the incarnation. God actually put on flesh and blood for our benefit. That's an amazing mystery, isn't it? Okay, so he wants to speak about that truth of the incarnation, that it is an historical reality. And what he wants to say is that this is how we know for sure that the teacher or the preacher or the prophet is inspired of the Spirit of God. They are teaching and believing that Christ did come in the flesh. And then in verse 6, he gives us another criterion for knowing God, doesn't he? He says that the person who knows God listens to those who from the beginning taught the message of Jesus Christ, the message that John is reaffirming in this passage. Again, we have John trying to reassure his readers. I suppose his readers uh, were lacking in self-confidence, lacking in self-esteem. They maybe were so beaten down by these false teachers that they weren't sure of what they believed anymore and they weren't sure of their relationship with God. And so John wants to reassure them that they're right with God and that they are from God and that they are holding to the truth. And so he tells them in verse 4, I want you to know that the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Now the one who is in you is the Holy Spirit of God. And the one who is in the world is the spirit of Antichrist. And so he wants his readers to know that they have God's spirit and that God's spirit who lives in them is more powerful and more mighty than any of the other false spirits in the world. And of course, this passage reminds me of something Elisha said to his servant in 2 Kings chapter 6. As his servant came out of the tent and looked up into the sky and saw the armies of, well, they weren't armies of God, were they? Armies surrounding him and Elisha. And Elisha comes to his servant and says, don't be afraid because there are more with us than there are with them. So I like that comparison and that's the great word for today. There are more with us than with them. He who is in us is greater than anyone out there in the world. And that should give us all hope and encouragement and confidence that we're on the winning team and we're on the right track. So hold on to what you have because you are from God. That's the encouragement for today. Previewing the next few verses, we're going to be looking at chapter 4, verses 
7 through 13. And again, John's going to remind us of God's love for us and how that should motivate us to love one another. I'll see you in a few days.